Right guys, in today's video I'll be comparing three drivers, 528.02, which is a driver from January, 536.40, which is the second lot or the second latest driver, and then the latest driver 536.99. So guys, I just finished all my benchmarks as you can see there, and as I was about to hit record or record this video, the power went out in South Africa, so there's no power, so my laptop's gonna die, so this, this video is gonna be very quick before I have no battery left. So let me just get straight into my results. So all my games are tested at medium settings, except for the newer, heavier titles. I am testing on a GTX 1650 laptop, so titles from this year generally are played at a mixture of low and very low. So um, Dead Space Remake is on the low settings preset, uh, Remnant 2 is on the low settings preset and then Ratchet and Clank's on the low settings preset. Everything else is generally on medium. And then where FSR 2.0 or 2.1 was available, I used the quality setting. And then guys, I try to incorporate online games, but generally speaking, online games that do have a built-in benchmark are paid for online games and I don't enjoy online games. So I'm not going to buy online games just for benchmarks. So unfortunately, you're stuck with single player games. Yay. And then lastly, I do test on a GTX 1650 laptop. Obviously a GTX and an RTX are two very different uh, technology set cards. So if you're on RTX platform, your results may vary, especially uh, 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 with regards to individual drivers. Um, but if you're on a GTX platform, Generally, GTX cards react similarly to uh, to all the drivers. So, um, and then also last thing I must mention, I just recently did a fresh install. So I did Windows update, so I had to redo all my benchmarks in any way, as well as the fact that I actually used to have 16 gigabyte dual rank uh, or dual channel RAM at, at 2933 megahertz. But um, I swapped one of my sodoms. So I swapped eight gigs for 16 gigs. So now I have 24 gigabytes of RAM. But instead of being at 2,933 megahertz, now my RAM is at 2,666 megahertz. So if my results look a little bit different, you know why. So I've got more RAM, but slightly slower now. But anyways, let's get to res results. I'm talking a lot here. So for the, uh, for the oldest driver 528.02, which had fantastic latency, when I add up all the average FPSs over 15 games, uh, the total FPS is 1,024, divided by 15, so my average FPS per game is 68.27. Do the same thing for the 1% lows. My total FPS over 15 games is 759, divided by 15, so my average 1% low per game is 50.6 and when I divide the uh, the average 1% lows by the average FPS the stability for this driver over the 15 games I've tested was 74.12% not a bad result but this driver is getting a bit long uh, uh, old and uh, long in the tooth so yeah there are better ones available and that's exactly what I'm getting to now so the previous driver 536.40, a fantastic driver if you're on a GTX platform. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it if you're on an RTX card, but if you're on a GTX card, it's got good latency as well as having fantastic performance. So um, when I add up all the average FPSs, uh, over 15 games, my total FPS was 1044, divided by 15, so my average FPS per game is 69.6. And then when I add up all the 1% lows, over 15 games, my 1% lows were 775 divided by 15. So my, so my um, average 1% low is 51.67. And then I see, I actually forgot to put the percentage there, but then again, the power went out so you can understand why. So as you can see, the stability of this drive is fantastic because the 1% uh, low is very close to the average FPS. So it's, it actually comes out, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's 74.52. Um, but as I was about to write that down, the power went out, so I neglected to put that. 
And then on the latest driver, um, also a very good solid driver. Um, it does have an uh, issue with flickering on the monitor, especially when I connected the external monitor initially. I uh, experienced a couple of crashes. That has gone away, strangely enough. But anyways, for the latest driver, when I add up all the average FPSs, my total FPS over 15 games in these games that I tested with my different RAM and after doing Windows Update, my total FPS was 1039, so it's a little bit different to what it was previously in my previous benchmark. And then average FPS per game is 69.27. Same thing for the 1% lows, add up all the 1% lows, so my total 1% low over 15 games, so 773. Divided by 15, so my average 1% low per game is 51.53. And then when I divide the 1% lows by the average FPS, the stability for this driver is 74.39%. Pretty good results, but if you're on a GTX card, I still recommend that you stay on 536.40. It's got the best average FPS, it's got the best 1% lows, and just bear in mind guys, there has been a Windows update, so my results are a little bit different to what they were previously. There's been a Windows update and also I did change my RAM configuration, but in this test, best average FPS, best average 1% lows. If you want the best driver on a GTX platform for the time being, 536.40 is your baby. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button. Um, if you have any questions, please hit me up in the comments section. And as always guys, if you're still watching and you haven't subscribed as of yet, now is the time to do so. It's people like you. Have a good night. Cheers. Mm -hmm.